Akira, and this is my brave. He said it gently, kindly, but still with genuine curiosity. You've never mentioned any plans to start a family. Is that something you're considering? If so, we should talk about it. I've been seeing Dr. K for several years. He'd helped me get from my darkest place eight years of rarely being able to leave the house to a successful career. He knew my deepest, darkest secrets, my worst fears, all of them, except one. I can't, I said. I'm doing so much better, but it's still hard. Work is hard, living here is hard. There is no way I could go off my meds long enough. Why would you have to go off your meds, he asked. Wouldn't I? Not what you're on. He said something about safety and pregnancy, about drug facts and studies and percentages, but I was no longer paying attention. A baby? Could I really have a baby? I hadn't even considered it in years. Of course, my husband and I had talked about it when we first got married, but at some point, without speaking about it, we had both decided that my mental illness would be a major barrier, one that had seemed insurmountable for many years. It broke my heart that I would not be able to raise a child of my own, but I'd never mentioned it to Dr. K because it was too painful to talk about, to even acknowledge. I don't know that I'd consciously thought the medications, the very same that had helped me achieve the necessary levels of stability, would be the final barrier to motherhood. But with that evaporating before me, the repressed desire came flooding back. I had convinced myself long ago that I wanted a professional life, though my job was astoundingly stressful and minimally fulfilling. That I wanted to travel the world, that we rarely traveled, and when we did, my anxiety made it an experience to endure rather than enjoy. We would have nice things and live in nice places and it would all be very nice. Yes, nice. I have no idea what we talked about for the rest of that session, not a clue. But by the time I got home, I was in tears. Joyous, wonderful tears. I wanna have a baby, I announced, before I'd even taken off my coat. My husband, of course, had not been in the session or in my head on the way home. It took several minutes of excited babble to get him up to speed, and he wasn't initially on board. We'd been married 15 years at this point, and I was 36. He had far more questions than I'd had. What would be the impact on me? How would I handle pregnancy and work? Work and being a mother? Of course I'd want to go back to work. I placed huge importance on building a resume that would prove to the world that I was not disabled. And we were living in New, York, in New York City at the time. If we had a baby, would we be able to stay? He was right to ask the questions, of course. And the ones he didn't ask, the ones that would have the biggest effect in the next, next couple years, what would be the impact of a miscarriage on my recovery, of fertility treatments? Devastating. But then the greatest tonic I've ever taken after the miscarriage, I left my high-intensity position for a laid-back one. When we didn't get pregnant again on our own, I started fertility treatments and, for the first time ever, asked for what I needed at work, shorter work hours, and they granted it. And then I got pregnant with a daughter, my daughter. Suddenly that next promotion wasn't nearly as important as making sure she was as healthy as she could be. I turned down projects. I learned to put my health first. And as my due date approached and we started researching caregivers, I had this overwhelming feeling that I could not leave my daughter. Not for this job. What was I doing here anyway? So we packed up. We left New York City altogether. I gave up that job and that career, and I don't regret it for a second. I spent so much time thinking that I had to prove that I could be something in spite of my mental illness. I channeled all my anxiety and nervous energy into work, into perfection. But I hadn't learned to take care of myself, to know the difference between functioning better and truly recovering. 
Now I'm focused on the things that matter to me most. I'm writing a novel, a lifelong dream, and I'm spending every possible moment with my daughter. I feel the healthiest I ever have. And I know now that it's not about proving anything. It's about knowing there's nothing to prove.